When soldiers faced the frozen hellscapes of Stalingrad, the Ardennes, and the Arctic convoys, they didn't have synthetic fleece, Gore-Tex, or heated vests. Yet somehow many of them survived weeks in sub-zero temperatures without frostbite or hypothermia. Something even modern explorers struggle to do with all their high-tech equipment. The secret wasn't brute endurance. It was the World War II layering system, a precisely engineered set of clothing layers designed to trap heat, wick moisture, and maintain airflow. Built from wool, cotton, leather, and, well, a fair bit of ingenuity, this system remains one of the most effective methods of staying warm in cold conditions ever devised. And the best part? It's replicable today with basic materials, not expensive brands. The system began as a battlefield survival necessity. In the early years of the war, Allied and Axis troops suffered massive losses from cold weather, not enemy fire. During the first Russian winter of 1941, German soldiers froze in steel helmets and cotton tunics. Their boots cracked, fingers blackened, and morale collapsed. The Allies watched and learned. By 1943, both sides began adopting what we now call the layering principle, not just to stay comfortable, but to survive in combat. The foundation of the World War II system was based on three layers, inner, insulating, and outer. But unlike modern versions, every piece was designed to work with the body's natural heat cycle, not against it. Wool was the heart of the system. Unlike synthetics, it continued to insulate, even when wet. Soldiers wore long wool underwear that wicked sweat away from the skin, preventing deadly chills during rest periods. Over that came a thick, loosely woven sweater or field shirt that trapped warm air but allowed vapour to escape. The outermost layer, often waxed canvas or treated cotton, wasn't fully waterproof, but it was wind-resistant and breathable. The philosophy was simple. It's better to stay dry from within than sealed in plastic-like gear that traps sweat. This is why modern hikers who rediscover the World War II system often report staying warmer with wool and canvas than with full synthetic shells. The brilliance of the Second World War layering system was that it treated air as insulation. Soldiers didn't dress tight, they dressed loose. Every layer created a thin pocket of air, warmed by body heat and protected by the next layer. Tight-fitting clothes, well, they crushed these air spaces, turning insulation into mere fabric. Manuals from the United States Quartermaster Corps specifically instructed troops to avoid compression of wool garments when stationary. Another overlooked element was ventilation. Soldiers were trained to open collars and cuffs during movement, then seal them again during rest. This method regulated heat dynamically, preventing the sweat-then-freeze cycle that kills most cold endurance attempts. It wasn't static protection. It was an adaptive system that turned clothing into a living shell. Modern cold gear often fails because it prioritizes impermeability. Waterproof membranes and tight insulation stop airflow entirely, which works for short exposure but becomes a hazard during continuous exertion. The Second World War system accepted that moisture was inevitable and focused instead on letting it escape before it froze. Footwear and hand protection, you know, were actually treated as engineering problems during the war. Soldiers found out that the body loses heat fastest through the feet, not so much because of exposure, 
but really because of trapped moisture. Wool socks, layered in two different thicknesses, sorted that out. The inner sock was thin and absorbent, while the outer one was thick and coarse, pulling moisture outward. This combination, well, it created a moisture gradient that kept the skin relatively dry. In extreme cold regions like Norway or the Soviet front, troops use felt-lined boots or reindeer hide mukluks, which were copied from Arctic indigenous communities. The same principle was used for gloves, double-layered wool with a windproof leather or canvas shell. Nothing fancy, but it worked because each layer had its job, manage moisture, trap heat, and block wind. Many modern outdoor enthusiasts, interestingly enough, have rediscovered that natural fibres often outperform synthetic ones under real survival conditions. The reason, plain and simple, is regulation. Wool adapts. It breathes when warm and insulates when cold. Modern gear, while light, tends to overheat the wearer or trap moisture that later, well, freezes. So, recreating the World War II system today is honestly pretty easy. You'd want to start with a lightweight wool or merino base layer, something that fits snug, but, you know, not too tight. After that, add a middle layer, maybe some loose wool or even a heavy cotton flannel just to give you a bit of insulation. Then top it all off with an outer shell made from waxed cotton or treated canvas, which will help with wind resistance. The real trick, though, is making sure there's movement between those layers, being able to open and close cuffs, collars and hems, so you can control how much air gets in or out. Now, if you're out hiking, working outdoors, or even camping in the winter, you should follow the same rhythm the soldiers did. Vent when you're active, seal up when you're still. Oh, and don't forget to carry a small piece of wax with you, so you can retreat your outer layer for water repellency, just like World War II soldiers did with candle wax mixed with oil. It's low cost, renewable, and honestly, really effective. The WWT layering system wasn't built by designers. It was refined by men who simply couldn't afford to fail. Their lives depended on staying functional in freezing weather while carrying heavy loads, often with, you know, limited supplies. They learned that comfort was a matter of equilibrium, not just equipment. Warmth came from knowledge, not technology. This philosophy translates perfectly to modern preparedness. Stockpiling expensive cold gear is honestly useless without understanding airflow, insulation and body heat control. In survival terms, your best defense against cold is managing how you wear clothes, not what you wear. Even in home preparedness, the same rule applies. Layer your insulation, just like they did with clothing. A small, layered setup of wool blankets, wax cloth, and air gaps can keep a person warmer than a single thick blanket. In a power outage or heating failure, these old principles can really make the difference between discomfort and danger. The WWT layering system remains proof that real survival wisdom doesn't expire. It's a reminder that the simplest materials arranged with intelligence can outperform modern solutions that rely on technology instead of understanding. Soldiers survived the world's coldest winters with nothing but wool, wax and willpower and those same principles still protect those who respect the balance between heat, air, and motion. 
If this kind of forgotten ingenuity fascinates you, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning. Share this guide with fellow history and survival enthusiasts, because the more we study these wartime innovations, the better prepared we become, not just for the cold, but for any challenge that tests human endurance.